Hi everyone, Alison Davis here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today's video is part of a series and I'm gonna cover the complete golf swing from setup to impact to follow through. So please check out the rest of the videos in this series. They will follow. So this will be the first video. The rest of the videos will follow shortly afterwards. So today's lesson is all about the setup, how we can set the golf ball to allow our swing to function. And a lot of people believe that the fundamentals in the golf swing are more important than the golf swing itself. Personally, I think generally speaking, the first point of breakdown quite often comes in the setup. So it's a good idea to try and set the ball as best we can to allow your swing to function to its best ability to help your game and make you a better golfer. If you are a first time viewer, please consider subscribing. I post videos every week on a variety of subjects and they will help your golf. Keep watching to learn about the setup. So today I want to talk through the setup and I want to go through all the details from the setup from the feet upwards, basically. So let's start with the feet. So for a stance with for a mid iron shot, I want it to be shoulder width apart. So if you measure your shoulders, this wants to be pretty much in the middle of your feet. That is the correct width to allow us to have stability, but also mobility to function correctly to create the right golf shots. The feet themselves. I would like the right foot to be flared slightly, probably about 10 degrees, and the left foot to be flared about 20 to 25 degrees. Now this depends a little bit on flexibility, but the less flexible you are, the more flare you'd want in your feet. So the less flexible you are on the backswing, the more flare this way, and the less flexible you are on the way forward, the more flare this way. But essentially, most people need more ability to turn onto the golf ball than in the backswing. That tends to be more important, hence why this foot's more flared. Obviously, if you flare it too much, it will start to restrict your ability to rotate in the backswing also. So this is why the 25 degrees or so is about the right blend for everything for most golfers. Knees, I want the knees to slightly rotate outwards so they kind of sit on the top of our feet, just like so. Hips. I want to feel that like the hips are slightly forward towards target, like this, a slight sort of bump laterally towards target to help set my spine behind the golf ball. But more importantly, when we talk about the hips, it's more about how we bend. So if I take this club and put it in the middle of my pocket here, I put my thumbs into that position there, and I feel I bend forward over that part, almost like I'm trying to crease the club and crease my trousers so the club sits in that crease level there. That's the kind of tilt point I want on the shot. Then from there, if I look to raise just my left hand forward and up, that gets me the right hip levels as well as the right tilt. While we're on the pelvis, there's a couple more things. So if I look at my pelvis here and I think of this as being tilted upwards, that makes it too anterior tilted. If I tilt it too much underneath, that's too posteriorly tilted. So I want that middle ground. So a good exercise is to actually go back and forth and find that middle ground. But if we do tilt correctly, as we've shown you already, that should give us the right amount of tilt in our pelvis anyway. But we're looking for a nice flat spot in here to help take the pressure off our back and also allow us to turn. Now, some people's backs are actually more curved than others naturally. So don't worry if yours is slightly more curved or slightly less curved. Just try and go through that exercise, find that middle ground, and that'll be where you'll be right for you. Working up to the kind of arms. Now I want the arms, I want the left arm to be comfortably straight. Now I know we'll see some golfers with a more bent arm, Brooks Koepka is slightly more bent at address, but certainly a straight arm is a good habit to have to allow the club and arm to stay in that kind of more structured manner. The trail arm, really important this one. If we take it into what I call a dumbbell position, or the give blood position, and feel it goes down the back trouser leg and onto the club, I want to see that trail arm tucked in so I can see some of this lead forearm at address. That allows me to fold the right arm and get that golf club working away correctly. If my right hand is too high or right arm's too high, I am likely to pick the club up or overroll the arms. So it can affect all of that in one go. So I want to talk to you now about the shoulders. Now the shoulders for me need to sit so they work down and backwards. They sit so the scapula is more secure as I would call it. So the shoulders sit backwards. So the shoulders feel like they're rotated. So a good exercise to feel that is just to feel like we do this, open up our hands, rotate our shoulders backwards. That's the kind of position I want the shoulders to be in. Then let the arms come to the side of the chest. That's ideal for me, okay? 
Obviously, if we feel we need to tilt a bit more to get under the ball because this retracts our arms a bit, then find your common ground that allows you to get to the golf ball. Last one would be the chin. So quite a lot of golfers would have the chin poking way forward. This provides very little structure to the neck and how it moves in the golf swing. So try and feel we almost move the back of our neck towards our collar to get that kind of double chin kind of look. So we get that structure of our neck at our dress. So a lot of information there. Let's break it down to a nice routine. Get roughly my distance away from the ball. Get my feet in position. Stand tall. Tilt over. Flex, left arm on the club, right arm on, chin into position. So that would be how I do my routine if I'm thinking about it a lot. On the golf course, I might try and make that more fluid. So obviously set up to the golf ball, get roughly away from the ball, stand up, retract my shoulders, down into the ball, hopefully right arm in the right position, and then from there make a swing. So the setup has a huge knock on effect to how we can move in the golf swing. Fundamentals are key, but we can get past poor fundamentals by having a good golf swing and good compensation. But if we're trying to build a golfer to be perfect from the start, if such a thing exists, then we'd want the setup to be good to allow us to move. So all these things I've talked about have reasons why I want you in those positions to allow you to move correctly. Go through your setup and see which one of these is the missing ingredient or check out if you're doing it right and check out those little processes we talked about, the bow and bend routine and bending from your hips correctly. I'm sure it'll help your game. So guys, please join the conversation. Chat down below, tell me what kind of things you want to hear from me in the future video wise and also ask any questions. Please also, if you did enjoy the video, click like and share the video. It really helps my channel. I really appreciate if you could do that. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed already, hit my logo down this bottom corner. Join me on my journey. Let's lower your scores and improve your golf. Thank you for tuning in today and see you again here soon and check out the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks.